Are you serious? More asteroids? They just keep coming and coming and coming and coming. And somebody said, Pastor Begley, what's going on? Well, Jesus said, calm down. Jesus said these were some of the signs of the end of the age. These are some of the signs he was specifically asked. If, you could, if, if he would explain to them some of the signs of his coming and the end of the world. Well, in Luke 21, let me begin reading in verse 25. Jesus answered by saying, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, and the sea and the waves roaring. Stop for a minute. Earlier today, I watched a, a video and had some information about a solar flare and a uh, what looked like a weird object that, that stayed and didn't penetrate through. And so the solar flare went up and came back down upon the sun. It was quite fascinating. I saw that this morning, but I didn't make a video about it. I said, eh, there's always something strange going on. Then I had a phone call from a, a lady over in North Carolina on last Saturday night who said, Pastor, the moon is red. Was there supposed to be a blue moon? I mean, excuse me, a red moon? I said, no, there's not a blood moon, but you may be seeing a slight reflection from the sun at a right setting of, you know, the setting of the sun and how it reflects off the moon. That sometimes can give it an orange tint. But, but you know, hey, what, who am I? Uh, but then we had... We have 111 people massacred this weekend in Syria. Oh, distress of nations. Even the United Nations are calling for an end of Assad. And even the Russians have begun to condemn him for such atrocities. And meanwhile, the sea and the waves roaring. Well, we've had a tropical storm approaching and coming ashore. Southern Georgia and part of northern Florida. Same time. It's not even hurricane season yet. And yet this is the third, the second tropical storm to come up on the East Coast. And a hurricane has already hit Mexico. But wait, where's the signs and the stars? Well, we've got an asteroid called 2012 KT42. Let me read it. Tomorrow. May 29, 2012, at about 7.07 UT, the asteroid designated 2012 KT-42 will pass only 8,700 miles from the Earth. Are you serious? I mean, that is close. That's up there, not right in the realm where most of the satellites that orbit the Earth are at. I don't think it's going to hit one, so I'm not going to freak out over it, but it's the fact that that it's happening the same time as a, this weird solar flare on the sun, this weird colored moon in North Carolina, these tropical storms and hurricanes, this distress, this nations, the murder, the mayhem, the wars, the rumors of wars, and now this asteroid that just come out of nowhere. Now, um, it's going to be 8,700 miles that it's going to go past the Earth. It's going to literally skim. I mean skim by the Earth's surface, uh, if you call 8,700 miles that close. Well, anytime you get within uh, striking distance of satellites, you're close. But the asteroid was discovered by a guy named A.R. Gibbs. And, um, you know, and he's, again, another amateur getting involved, coming up with some uh, significant finds. And what blows me away about all this NASA never finds nothing. NASA never finds anything. They've got the Hubble telescope. They've got all this sophisticated equipment. They've got this space station up there in the sky. They've got all of the world's best observatories. And they never see nothing. What? Well, I see more than what they see. Because I see biblical signs. And I want to share that with you. Let me read it to you, the rest of the few verses that Jesus said. He said, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, that's confusion, and the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. 
and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. How close are we to the coming of the Lord? How close? Bride, are you ready? Well, yes. If you're part of the bride of Christ, if you've been born again, washed in the blood, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. At least any man should boast. And, oh, by the way, Pastor Begley can't save anybody, and I've said that a million times, but we can point you to the one who can. His name is Jesus. It's in Him that we live and move and have our very being. For no man can come to the Father but by Him. He is the door into the sheepfold. He is the shepherd who giveth his life for the sheep. He is the rock in the weary land. He is the shelter from the storm. The rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. He's even the bright in the morning star. He is the great I Am. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's no other name in heaven or given among men whereby men must be saved except through and by the name of Jesus Christ. And except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. But whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. So why don't you call upon the Lord today? Why don't you repent of your sins and ask Christ to come into your life and allow the blood of Jesus Christ to give you the remission of sins, to wash away all sins and make you clean and new. Matter of fact, He'll cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. Christ is returning. Matter of fact, one scripture says, as lightning cometh from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. He's like a thief in the night when you least expect it, but you know he's coming. Are you saved? Have you been born again? Are you a child of God? Are you perfect? No. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. Do I make mistakes? Of course. Am I forgiven? Yes. Because I put my trust and my hope and my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to be saved, you want me to help you, please send me a personal message. Do it right here on this YouTube channel. Go to my channel page in the private messages and title it, I Want to Be Saved. I Want to Be Saved. I Want to Be Saved. We just had a person saved today on YouTube, the 440th person to request salvation with our ministry this year. I didn't save a one of them. I couldn't save a goldfish if it was gapping for water or air. I can point you to the man who can. His name is Jesus. God bless you. Let us know. God bless. And today I've been working on my new book coming out pretty soon. So uh, it was exciting to actually write it, write on it today. Can't wait till it gets here. Um, the RFID 666. Oh, it's going to be good. All right. We'll talk to you later. God bless you.